so yep, this is your office. Right, now show me the lab. Uh, actually, I don't have a lab. This is where I do all my work. What? You just stay at the computer all the time? You don't have a lab? No. I thought you said you're a real scientist. Why am I even here? <laughs> I'm in the third year of my PhD studying physics at the University of Melbourne. Well, within the School of Physics here, there are, I think, six groups. There's theoretical particle physics, experimental particle physics. So they're the things that deal with, like, the Large Hadron Collider, finding the Higgs boson, searching for dark matter, all that kind of stuff. There's the astrophysics group, and then there's the theoretical condensed matter group, experimental condensed matter group, which is the experimental side of that. And then there's my group, which is the optics group. I look at light and how it interacts with matter. So what I do is simulate what happens to a single atom inside a really intense laser field. I don't do any experiments. I just sit here at my computer and run the experiments basically on my computer. It's what actually a lot of people in physics do in all the kind of different groups. Um, there's a lot of simulations that sort of complement experiments. You know, everything... Okay, I'm going to interrupt you there. This is good, but... There's only so much we can film with you just sitting there staring at a computer screen. Isn't there something else you do in this building that we can film while you're talking? As part of the optics group, we basically just look at, at light and how it interacts with everything else. So there's different aspects of it. There's uh, you know, making lasers, uh, making light sources, um, shooting light sources at things, and then sometimes figuring out what those things look like. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you get two shots. All right. We don't have one of these in the chemistry building, okay? <laughs> yeah, light on all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, from far infrared to hard X-rays. So, typical lasers, like the ones you see in labs around here, are in like the, they're usually red to infrared. Uh, if you go to large facilities like the Sikatron down in Monash, uh, then you're looking at X-rays. And Sikatron, Sikatron actually has a lot of things from X, from a uh, infrared light all the way up to x-rays. Well, a lot of optics is to do with imaging, which means we have something, <laughs> that's a really good shot. Uh, and we, we want to know what it looks like. Um, often like a, a really, really small length scale beam, looking at ways we can use light to actually get the structure of really small molecules. This kind of stuff is useful for drug design, um, because if we know what molecules look like, then some of the time we can figure out what they do. We definitely have a lot of crossover with biology, actually. We image biological molecules. Membrane proteins or something, it's like a, a big thing around, oh my god, a big thing around here. We make uh, interesting light sources, we have interesting things to shoot it at, and we see what happens when we shoot the light. Awesome. Usually we, we use lasers, because lasers are, are really bright, really coherent light sources, uh, usually of just a single wavelength. You don't know what wavelengths are, look it up, you lazy. A lot of my work, I write a computer program which will simulate something that's happening in the lab. But when we have an experiment in a lab, we want to have some idea of what the actual outcome of the experiment's going to be, and that gives us a sort of a, a benchmark with which we can test our results. I simulate the experiment on my computer, and that means basically we know, because this, this is actually fairly fundamental physics, we know what all the laws governing these processes are. So that we write them all in the form of equations, put those equations into a computer, the computer just turns through them and spits out some answers. My day is taken up largely by actually coding. There's also some sort of theoretical model modeling that I do. So I, I try and uh, go through the physics, figure out how I'm going to put it into a, a program that will actually represent what's happening in an experiment. Um, and then I run the, the simulations. Uh, can you show us like what it looks like when you run a code? This is what it looks like when my code is running. If I have a question such as what happens to this particle in this laser field, then I can run this, it will propagate through each time step of the laser field and give me an answer at the end. And then from that, an answer, which is the, the state of the, the particle, uh, I can extract whatever information I want so I can find out the sort of momentum distribution, the location of the particle, um, maybe the, the light that's been emitted by that particle. Uh, this usually takes about an hour or so to run, maybe up to a day, maybe more. The, the programming language stuff, you pretty much just pick up as you need. As long as you, I mean, it helps sort of understand 
how a program works. So there's another thing as well, there's knowing how to actually represent the physics in a numerical sense. And I can apply this code to a lot of different problems. So each step in this code is fairly, it's fairly well known, but the whole thing together maybe hasn't been put together that way before. Sweet, thanks Daniel, that should do. I'll let you get back to work. Actually, my, my code's still going, so I was just going to get a copy. You want to come? Yeah, sure. Sweet. Cool. But if you want really hard x-rays with a really, really high flux, so a lot of a lot of light going through at once, then you use the facilities, new facilities, which are third Wait, generation. I just put in yours, didn't I? Shit. <laughs> I was paying attention.